Oh, I kind of like the lighting. I don't know. I'll see what it looks like when I'm editing. Hello everyone. I really hope the fan is not too loud, but if it is, that kind of sucks because I'm not turning it off. As you can tell, we have a duck. So today is going to be a very informative video. Why did I feel like I was doing the, this is Benson. Be nice to Benson. You know I'm serious because I'm holding a duck. If you know that reference, we can be friends. We can be friends anyway. Unless you like, unless you like suck as a person. But if you know the reference. Anyway. Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know, the Olympics are currently going on. I think by the time I post this, I, I think Rio Jurassic has qualifications on Thursday. Or Friday. I don't know. But I know it's one of those days. <laughs> so, I thought I'd be giving my tips to training during the gymnastics during the summer. Um, yeah. I don't know if this will be coming out um, this week for me or next week. There's going to either be, this is my, I just posted, I don't know, but it's either going to be coming out on the 17th, no. Is it going to be coming out on the 24th or the 31st? I don't know. Right now, I think it's going to be the 34th, but I'm also kind of leading to the 24th, so as you can tell, I'm good at making cool decisions. But if it is still on the day I decide, done. So here are my 10 plus tips for thriving during rhythmic gymnastics practice. Well, because I made notes. I prepared. I'm a professional. Okay. Number one. Heating packs and ice packs are your best friends. This is very true. I didn't really understand this until I was older, but now I ice my I heat my knee in the morning and ice my knees every day at practice, no matter if they hurt, or, no matter if they like hurt, or if they are like, or if I didn't do any gymnastics because it just it makes my knees feel great and you kind of need it. I figure I keep doing gymnastics for a long period of time because gymnastics is not the nicest sport to your body, even if you take perfect care of it. Number two, very weird tip, but don't take baths after practice unless you're taking a really cold bath because you're going to fall asleep and falling asleep in the bath is not good so I recommend taking a cold shower and or any type of shower after you practice this type of bath <laughs> that was so worded weird that was weird that was worded so weirdly number three if you have morning practice eat sugar after to get your energy back up this is like before you eat a second meal because like a real meal with like nutrition after practice because you're really gonna be too tired to eat so I recommend like getting like an iced tea or something that has sugar in it just get your sh like I don't know if this is healthy but it's what I do I get to get sugar back in my system and then then I have the energy because I just want to eat after practice and that's not good either. Number four, I legit just wrote skincare, skincare, skincare. You gotta do your skincare if you're working out for a nine plus hours a week. I don't know how long how much people normally practice, but no matter how much you work out, you need to wash your face, you need to do your skincare, you need a lotion, you need to do all that stuff because otherwise your skin's gonna break out and it's gonna be painful. And you don't want to deal with that. Number five, bring a towel or a fan to practice during summer camp. I recommend a towel because a fan is you you can't do if you're doing ribbon and you're not gonna bring a huge fan fuse if you're just gonna be a small face fan. So I really recommend a towel over a fan. But I do have a fan and it is useful and it, yeah. So towel or fan because you really don't want to overheat because you're going to pass out. If you can change before or after practice, do it. Because you don't want to be a leotard longer than you need to be. Leotards aren't comfortable. They really aren't. If you train them, I really recommend um, changing before or after because A, like the synthetic, but most leotards are very uncomfortable and they're, they're not healthy for your skin. They're like all ugh and they run ugh and they Ugh, and they're just like so annoyingly sweaty and so I recommend changing so it's better for your skin to not be that sweat. Hydrate a lot after practice, so much that you need to piss. This is very weird, but like you really should drink like a whole water bottle afterwards because you've just worked out for so long and all the fluids out your body because you're sweating, so you need to hydrate. I have a lot of extra braces. Knee brace, ankle brace, elbow brace, all this stuff. Because if you're someone like me who will work through anything, you might as well just have a brace there because it's safer, A, and B. It's also like, if it just starts hurting, you can put it on and just like give it a little extra support so you can continue working and it, it might be a difference between injury and not injury. Knee pads and elbow pads are the best. Wear them during summer camp. You may be sweaty and they may feel uncomfortable against your skin, but bro, you don't want 
You don't want to be covered in bruises when you get home, okay? So you've got to wear them. Number 10. I don't know how long I've been saying numbers or if I haven't been. Work the hardest skill in the summer because you don't know what you're capable of. Capable of. Don't sell yourself short. Basically, if your coach gives you two options, work on this one, which is more a little up your speed, or this harder one, choose the harder one first because that's what summer camp is for. The point of summer camp is to be like, I'm going to try these hard skills. I probably won't even have them next year. But you know what? I'm going to try them because if I do get them, because sometimes hard things come easy to some people, like things that are normally harder come easier to some, it's better for you because you got higher, I think, in school or in higher points, and it's actually easier for you. Because once you've been doing gymnastics for a long time, you kind of know what works for you, but you're, I'm still surprised when I skill that my coach gives me, because my coach knows me better about my gymnastics than I do, will give me the skill, and I'm like, ah, I don't think I can do that, you know, it's some, that's just not my wheelhouse, it's not like my normal expertise, and she'll give it to me, and I, and I can do it, and it's like a really hard, like, above my level toss, but it makes sense to my brain, just like, it's just my brain the right way, that I can do it. Number 11, breathing, master the breathing, and master everything. This is really true. For a long time, I did not breathe at all while I stretched because I know it is very unhealthy and not good. Which is why I'm telling you, you gotta breathe. I always tell the kids at my gym, you gotta breathe. You gotta, you know, let air in and out of your lungs. It's very important. Also, like, if you're stretching, just breathing in and doing a really exaggerated deep breath relaxes your muscles and then pushes you down. And breathing's just so important. You gotta, you, you're doing a minute, 30 second routine. You gotta push through the whole thing. You gotta breathe. Like, I had a really fast flow routine for the last two, year, two years. And I had to learn how to breathe all over again, and then I had to learn how to breathe in a mask. So it's just like, breathing is so important to living, and that sounds really stupid, but it really is. And I did not understand that until now. Why well, chose shoes in bulk, slash learn what skills you need to wear socks for, and what skills you should wear shoes for. I literally just looking up next to my camera, I just have two pairs of toe shoes, and an old pair of toe shoes, and like eight other old pair of toe shoes somewhere around my room. Because you go through toe shoes so quickly, but it's also, like, just buying them bulk, because your feet don't grow that much. I mean, this is kind of for someone who went from, like, a size 6 to a size 9 and a half, um, shoe size over quarantine. Not over quarantine, but over, like, two years, which is a lot. So, my touch is in bulk. It's just easy. You don't have to keep ordering them, and you're going to go so quickly, especially during summer camp. Number 14. Don't just nod and say you understand the correction. If possible, repeat it back to them in a way that makes sense to your brain. Because, let's just say this, this is an example of me doing this in math, what my, 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 like a teacher will explain to me, and he's like, yeah, okay, I get that. That totally makes sense to me. I don't get it at all. I have no idea what they said. I was thinking about, like, Percy Jackson or something. Like, I wasn't listening at all. Or I just didn't understand any of the words that came out of their mouth. And so I was like, yeah, mm-hmm, I'm going to do that now. I don't know what that means. And this is the same for gymnastics. you got to listen to them explain it to you and then, like, repeat it back. And then if you're wrong, then you get your mistake there. And you don't have to waste doing the skill 50 times. Also, be creative with how you remember how to do things. Um, this really helped me. I came up with some really weird analogies for learning some skills, and it's really helped me, you know, be able to get skills I did not think were in my wheelhouse. Number 15. Watching documentaries and your favorite gymnast routines are a great way to inspire you um, when you really don't want to go practice. Because I have this version documentary that I watch whenever I just look for and quit, and bro, I get so inspired all over again because these girls are going through the hardest stuff and they're still going, I'm like, you know what, they can do that, because they look like they're about to have a mental breakdown every single day, I can do this, you know, like, I want, I, I mean, I don't want to be in the Olympics, but I want to be okay, I want to be decent, I want to have some skills, I mean, useless skills in the real world, but I want to have skills, they're like, but I mean, not, I mean, like, since there are applicable skills in every competitive sport, it's just more like, what job interview will they need me to know how to do a punch changer? 16, this one took me like, yeah, I didn't get until level 5, 6, I mean, I was level 6. Um, enjoy the little goals. No, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't get into level 7. <laughs> enjoy the little, like, goals in life. Like, oh, I didn't hit myself in the head. Oh, the ball bounced closer. Because it's such a sport that really just takes a lot of time to master. And, you know, you might as well just... I don't know. Just, like, do it. That was, wow, there's you. You should be a competitive talker. Just remember that because others get it quicker does not mean you can't get it. I'm going to tell you a story. I don't have a flexible back now. I didn't have one in the past, but it wasn't as bad as it is now. And I couldn't do a ring balance until level 5. I can barely do a ring balance now, but that's just because I injured my back. But, like, I can barely, 
my ring bathrooms have always been horrible. I've never competed with a ring balance in my routine. I'm not that flexible. And all the other kids on my level are doing the ring balance, and I'm a very competitive person and a jealous person when it comes to gymnastics, and I kind of hate that about myself, but it's just who I am, and I can't really solve that. Like, I don't say it to anyone, I just, like, if someone has to live for me, I'm just like, oh, dang it. Just, this is just the person I am. And everyone was getting ring balances, and I was having side balances, and, add two, and like, airplane balances, and add two balances. Things we had in level three that I didn't really like those. But I realized that... I was able to complete these elements with full certainty that I would get them, while other people was having the ring balance in the routine, they were only getting it 90% of the time. And I don't find joy in trenching, and I know some people do, I'm just not one of those people. And so I really have to make the routines work with you, work with the gymnast that you are. Leave some easy things in your routine, that way you're not stressed about your whole routine, you're only stressed about like 98% of it. <laughs> no, but yeah, this really is a lifesaver. Do the stretches that your coach gives you to relax in between, like, exercises during war. Older you will thank you. I never used to do those when you have to lean forward to stretch your back out. Oh, I would never do it. I was like, why do I need to do that? My back's fine. Like, I don't feel anything. Now I have back pain. Oh, they're like, why don't you lean forward to doing your mill split? I don't need to do that. I can do a mill split. I can't do it. So, listen to what your coaches say when it comes to relaxing your muscles. Do those weird meditative things that they, ha they have within the practice. Future you will thank you. Also remember, if you're at competition and someone else wins, don't... You can feel annoyed that you didn't win first place, but don't think that they, should have, they shouldn't have got it because they probably worked hard for it. Or they didn't. Maybe they didn't work hard, they're just extra talented. But they became out and performed a routine. You gotta be a good sport at competitions. Number 22, I've said this a hundred times, and I'm going to say it again. Up, and this is a little different, but I really need some synonyms for optimize. Optimize the routine for the current gymnast, not the future gymnast. My future gymnast is the best gymnast in my head. They're so good at everything. He gets all the elements right. They do all their stuff right, and she kills it. President me doesn't do that. President me falls over. President me throws tantrums in the middle of the floor. It doesn't mean you can't strive for excellence. I just know what I'm capable of. I know. I'm not gonna do a fine inclination turn. You know why? Because that, 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 that move is so hard and I can't do it. So I'm just not gonna do it. It's not my wheelhouse. What you gonna do? Hmm? What you gonna do? Work hard. That's what you're gonna do. And number 23, the last one. Find joy in it or you won't last. If you don't love gymnastics, you can't do it. Your parents can tell you gymnastics every day, they can pay the coaches, but it's not your sport. It's not your sport. Don't force yourself to do a sport that isn't you. It's like if I force myself to play volleyball. I do it, and I do it, and I work so hard because that's the way my brain works. But it's not my sport. My sport is one that makes me cry every day, that makes my knees hurt so badly that I want to cry even more, that makes my face taste like makeup, that makes my head have pretty sure of holes from body pins, that makes my feet bleed, that makes my shoulder sore, and makes me not want to get out of bed in the morning. But at the end of the day, it's the reason I made it through quarantine, it's the reason I'm where I am today, and without gymnastics I'd be a totally different person, and I would not want to meet that person. Gymnastics gave me a ability to survive in life, ability to work hard, and morals that community. And I know it sounds super cheesy and like a weird essay I would write, but it's true. Gymnastics saved my life. I mean, does it end my, almost end my life every day? Yeah, I've done things I probably should not do when it's like landing on my neck and stuff. Landing on my knees that already hurt, but it's also the reason I wake up every morning because I mean, not that I want to do it every day, but I'm too scared to quit. <laughs> and so I just keep going back. I'm so, because, <laughs> I'm joking about it, but it's kind of serious, but, <laughs> what am I supposed to do if I don't do gymnastics? Another gymnast who's been doing it forever got this, like, what am I supposed to do if I don't spend hours in the gym? It gives my brain a release, but it's the school, it's the past, it really is. Is it a painful release? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is what I need in life. Also, yes. Yeah, it's a long video. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I really do hope it's helpful. Um, there aren't many really mystic YouTubers. The one I used to watch switched it down, so I'm here to represent this sport that no one talks about. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you have a good day and stay healthy, stay happy. Don't fall into a ditch. Record this. Stay happy, stay healthy, don't fall into a ditch. And enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you subscribe if you want to, it's completely free. And I will love you more if you do. <laughs> I'm literally like filming this on my phone so I can remember the outro because I like it so much. Say hi! 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 Anyway, yeah. Okay. I love you. Bye-bye.